Hi, in this uh, video, I'm going to summarize some of the key takeaways from taking this course by Dr. Julie Shiro on digital transformation. This course was held in uh, October last month, quite early in the morning, but it was well worth waking up super early and actually taking the course. We learned quite a bit from this course, mainly around uh, digital transformations, what it is, what it is not, why it fails, how can you use digital transformation for your um, competitive advantage, how can you use the power of recommendation engine, search engines, virality, and build influence in this digital age. And we learned something more of the future technologies around blockchain and others. The really good books that are referenced uh, in the course, which were around uh, using the power of data, they're highlighted on the, the right-hand side in yellow. Uh, there's a really good podcast or Masters of Scale and uh, a book on the digital matrix, the new rules of biz business uh, transformation through technology. So in all, this was an amazing course and I'm gonna attempt to summarize some of the key takeaways. It starts off with a lot of reading. We were given lots of reading, especially around case studies for four different sectors, um, two in re four different companies, two in retail, one in digital enterprise, uh, uh, and then the other one, I think uh, the, the one in retail was the yes, the other one was Zoom, then we also did uh, uh, the case study on blockchain and then we did again a case study another on retail on stitch fix so i'm going to summarize uh, what were the key takeaways just from the reading itself there's much more that we learned in the course but let's look at what we learned uh, from the case studies so the yes is the company which is building the future of e-commerce using the power of AI. And so what they do is they are building a personalized store for every shopper, right? Imagine now the technology is capable of giving you personalized content. So they shared how they built fantastic UX to really improve their overall experience how they had a chat bot that gave personalized experience, how they had the UX to be so intuitive, like swipe left, swipe right, if you like or if you don't like. And so they significantly reduced the friction that the users face in real life in retail. And they are able to now understand using the power of algorithm, what preferences the users have. So those were huge differentiators, just imagine the amount of variety that you can provide, the amount of personalized experience you can provide to every shopper is just amazing. That's what was their biggest uh, differentiator and they were able to attract lots of brand uh, players to sell on their, on their uh, offering of their app. So the power of UX, power of AI, power of personalization um, was key takeaway from, from this case study for me. Uh, they also shared KPIs or key performance indicators like CAC, LTV, retention, CAC meaning customer acquisition cost, uh, lifetime value of the customer's retention or churn, and they use personas like fashionists or fashion follower, and they try to focus on certain KPIs to improve them. So using AI, using UX, the best way using metrics and data to power your business was the biggest takeaway from this journey of digital transformation for this company, right? And they're in, in a sense building the future of retail. So that was the first reading, fascinating read. The second one was how Zoom, we all have gone through using Zoom in one meeting or the other. And we studied like how did Zoom managed to ride this tsunami of growth, especially during COVID. How can it continue growing? What were the key factors uh, that helped uh, lead it to success? How they build differentiation by building both for the enterprise and individuals, blue jeans, teams, Skype, 
you know, WebEx, so many competitors were there, but they they had they had the simplification DNA, which made them succeed in a pretty big way. The CEO, Eric Yuan, um, wanted to get to the US and he tried nine different times uh, uh, to apply for the visa, got rejected according to the case. And he worked at Cisco and WebEx, right? So he found out that he was head of WebEx, so he knew the customer pain points. And the reasoning for him to launch Zoom is was around completely reinventing the offering. He wanted to have more participants, 15 participants at the same time. He wanted the setup to be quick. He wanted the quality to be top notch. He, he knew that customers are frustrated with quality and um, wanted to offer products for free. Even this recording I'm doing is on Zoom. Although I'm recording my screen, but Zoom is now everywhere, right? And how did they do it? They did it by um, having this core value, which is delivering happiness to customers, right? Delivering happiness. It's not delivering a phone call, it's delivering happiness. And so that, that culture at the company played a huge role. They, everyone was in the mindset of how can I help, right? Which was huge competitive advantage that they had they were competing against small and large established players. Blue Jeans was an incumbent. Uh, Microsoft was another one. But they kept everything simple, including their product, design, experience, messaging, onboarding. Everything was so simple and simplified, and simple is not easy. And they, they were really integrating at light speed with all kinds of enterprise requirements, and that really had a huge edge, right, for them. And the biggest cost advantage that they had, which I learned after reading the case, was how they built their R&D in China, including product. And so they had like a 4X at the minimum cost advantage for building things, and their entire development team was in China. So they were able to bid, beat uh, Wall Street expectations, remain profitable, but a lot of this came at the cost of uh, privacy and security. We all know how many um, security loopholes that we've seen over the last two years, uh, which which enabled them to go fast, but they had lots of issues, right? So it was a simple and reliable product, but had security issues. So that was the key learning from Zoom. Phenomenal growth. We see we saw how in 2020 the stock price went through the roof. It's correcting big time because of the competition from Microsoft and many other players. But Zoom was a really good case study for digital transformation. The third case study was around blockchain, the future that's building in front of us. Like a lot of people are big skeptics when they hear about Bitcoin, coin you know, different kinds of coins like Dogecoin and many other coins that are developed every day. But Bitcoin is a technology, it uses technology called blockchain. And that is uh, fundamentally powerful and uh, introduces many new novel concepts. Um, today, a lot of people still are naysayers in terms of uh, what they think the potential holds for this technology, but this technology fundamentally reverses the centralized uh, bookkeeping to decentralized and it introduces many new concepts that can phenomenally help uh, provide better technology and uh, empower many players to, to win. And, and the example that was given was France is at the forefront. They are uh, the Ministry of Economy and Finance at France. Uh, they want to be global world leaders in blockchain and they actually encouraged uh, uh, 2020 blockchain accelerator. A lot of participants came in, they're funding it big time. Um, lots of hurdles, but there are lots of uh, good applications as well. Lots of concepts for people who are new to this to know, like what is a miner, what is a coin, what is a ledger, what's a decentralized ledger, and you know, how, who gets rewards. What is the encryption coming in? So a really interesting area for people to look into because this could uh, this could change the way uh, the, um, how we do finance in uh, the future, right? 
and not just finance but also like blockchain has a lot of applications when it comes to like a walmart there's an example in the case that shows how they used blockchain uh, to find out where in their supply chain were the products being damaged so they can get to the source of it the root cause of it and actually go fix the problem so that was pretty amazing in terms of how you can use blockchain not just for bitcoins and finance but with many other things and one example that came in was an insurance uh, payout that happened instantly uh, when their flight got delayed and they were able to use that uh, using uh, blockchain so there are many amazing value adds that this technology provides so blockchain is definitely an area of disruption for the future another fourth and the final case study was stitch fix another one in retail we saw the yes uh, but Stitch Fix is another company that uh, provides a fix. It's like uh, for those people who have no time for shopping and they want a digital wardrobe uh, or a digital fix of clothes, Stitch Fix came to the solution. And it provides a good variety. It handles clients' preferences. So like the yes, it provides personalized recommendation and also personalized fixes. Fixes is basically a set of clothes in a box that gets shipped to you and you get to decide which ones you want to keep and which ones you don't want to keep. So there's this aspect of uh, uh, the, the, the fun that you get from using a slot machine when you gamble, you get a little bit of surprise. So there's this newness and fun that comes out of uh, getting new clothes. They also have uh, a stylist that uh, which, which will generate the fix for you. There are lots of competition in this area. But the goal for them is to use data and predictive analysis to get the client to keep at least one or two items. And if you can do that, then then the whole shipping, um, stitching, you know, fixing the boxes, having a stylist, this whole inventory, all of that is worth the cost. Nordstrom Trunk Club and Amazon Prime wardrobe are uh, and amazon personal shoppers are competition competition that's uh coming in front for some of these areas so lots of lots of areas uh, of growth here uh the ipo happened uh and it's going to a subscription digital subscription right and it's lots of amazing reading uh and we saw many areas where we see people are competing and uh and through digital means of transformation. And we saw how Zoom did it. We saw how the retail, two, two different retail companies did it. And we are seeing how blockchain is entering into finance. So lots of amazing things uh, that to learn from the course. So now we're gonna get into day one. But before that, one other thing I learned was she uses, the, uh, the professor used her screen so well. She was able to move between screens like there was a five minute timer in between break and there was like a timer that, that ran and there was like a video of this earth moving. And so there was really interactive way in which this entire sessions were delivered, which was huge kudos on how this was done. So amazing uh, learning. So I'm gonna share day one um, after this.